This video is going to show the replacement of a secondary air injection pump and its associated valves in a 2006 Toyota Sequoia. This vehicle is essentially the same as a 2006 Tundra and this repair will apply to virtually any year model Sequoia or Tundra that has the smog pump located under the intake manifold. We are going to divide the repair into three videos and this first one will deal with the removal of the intake manifold itself. The second video will deal with the replacement of the smog pump and the third video will be the reassembly of the engine. It should be noted that the first video in the series would also apply to any Sequoia or Tundra of this vintage needing a starter replacement, a new intake manifold gasket, or one that has a cooling system leak under the intake manifold. Neither the Toyota manual nor the Chilton manual is totally helpful in this process. To be sure, they list a number of steps and even provide some drawings or photos. However, neither manual specifically addresses the procedure for replacing the smog pump or the starter. What they do early on is to refer you to the engine chapter and tell you to join the cylinder head disassembly in progress. That is to say, join in where it says item 13, intake manifold disassembly. By this phase, they have already removed some of the other parts from the engine. In a nutshell, what I'm going to try to do is to make it a bit simpler for you to identify the necessary and the unnecessary steps they list in this repair. There are a number of things I would like to discuss about this repair, such as how I came to do it, uh, what were the alternatives, what were the costs involved, and where to get the necessary parts as cheaply as possible. I'm going to put all the information in the text just below the video screen and just above the comments section. Make sure to click on where it says show more to read these items. Also, doing it this way will make it easier for you to copy and paste the list of part numbers and so forth. Let's get started. These are the uh, parts that we'll be installing in the Sequoia, the secondary air injection pump, the diverter valve, and two check valves. These are the gaskets for the intake manifold and these are some gaskets for the check valves. When you're buying the parts for this repair, I'm going to strongly recommend that you replace the O-rings and gaskets that you disturb. An old friend and professional mechanic told me long ago that it's just foolish to reuse 10-year-old gaskets and seals. In a repair such as this, where these gaskets may take over an hour's worth of work just to get to, you don't want to have them leaking three months from now. I bought the O-ring and gasket kit for all eight of the fuel injectors. The O-ring for the fuel pressure regulator, the o-ring for the water bypass pipe, four metal crush gaskets for the fuel delivery pipe unions, and two compound gaskets for the rear water bypass joint. I also replaced the intake manifold gaskets which I just showed you in the previous frame. I'll list all of the part numbers for these o-rings and gaskets in the uh, accompanying text. It should be noted that even in the Toyota manual they describe all of these as non-reusable parts. When I'm doing a project uh, as, as complicated as this I usually uh, copy the pages out of the uh, Toyota manual plus any other information that I think I'm going to need and just put it in a little uh, notebook. Uh, and the first couple of pages are just a, a brief summary of the things I, pr I plan to do and then uh, this is the actual uh, actual pages out of the manual um, and I've divided in this case I've divided it into the engine section and then the emissions section. I usually pick out the tools that I know that I'm going to need and lay them out in some kind of logical fashion right behind where I'm working. Before we get started we need to remove the negative lead from the battery What I often do is to take an old rubber glove and put it on the negative pole and then put the lead back on. And this just keeps this from making accidental contact with the battery while we're working on the car. 
Looking at the left rear of the intake manifold, there's a brake booster hose that needs to be removed. You can loosen the hose clamp on the rear of the intake manifold and then take out this bolt right here which will free up this union and then you can move this whole assembly and up and out of the way. There's no need to remove these two hose clamps. The next step is to remove the throttle body cover by removing these two nuts. Although shortly we're going to remove the intake air assembly, uh, the water bypass hoses, and the uh, electrical connector to the throttle body, um, I found no reason to remove the throttle body from the intake manifold and I think it can be left and uh, attached without any problems. Now we're going to disconnect the intake air assembly uh, by removing these two large hose clamps here and here. We're also going to remove this bolt which attaches this air conditioner hose to the intake air assembly. Now I'm going to remove uh, three hoses from the uh, intake air connector. Number one, I'm going to remove the power steering uh, air hose, the um, hose to the fuel pressure regulator, and also this large hose which goes to the uh, PCV valve. Now that we've freed up this hose uh, connector, uh, we can push it up and out of the way. Now we're going to remove the electrical connector to the throttle body. Now we'll remove these two uh, water bypass hoses from the uh, throttle body. Because you run a chance of uh, breaking a lot of these old connectors if, if you try to remove them, I've tried my best uh, to leave as many in place as possible. In spite of what the Toyota manual says, I've found that there are a number of things that don't need to be removed in this repair. For instance, the ECT sensor you can leave in place. Also, the ignition coil connectors, the air fuel sensors, and as I mentioned before, the throttle body. Um, I'll also mention other things in the course of this repair that uh, you don't need to remove. As much as possible, I have tried not to remove hoses and have left them in place if it did not hamper the removal of the intake manifold. Next we're going to uh, remove this guarded fuel line connector. You do that by spreading the two flanges on either side and pushing backward on this uh, orange cage. Then you can squeeze on the two blue buttons, one on either side, and then just pull this connector backwards to disconnect it. This is the rear fuel return line and it is uh, held on to the back of the left fuel delivery pipe right here. Uh, there's a bolt that you'll need to remove and this is a fairly narrow space so you're going to have to use a combination wrench to get that out. You, there's just not enough room for a socket wrench. This fuel line is also held on to the rear of the intake manifold in two other places and I'll explain that in a moment. I'm showing you this a bit out of sequence but I wanted to make a point. Uh, you're looking at the rear of the manifold. Obviously it's off, it's upside down, uh, but there is a structure that's the rear fuel return line that is bolted down in three places. Uh, a moment ago you saw me remove the bolt that uh, attaches to the rear of the driver's side fuel delivery tube. Uh, the manual says to remove this but I found that uh, it's almost impossible to get to this bolt while the uh, manifold is still attached to the engine and uh, even this one is a little bit difficult to get to. Therefore I just left the line in uh, place and I was just careful uh, not to bend it. Next I'm going to remove this large hose which is uh, to the uh, left side uh, PCV valve. Now on the left side of the engine I'm going to remove this bolt which holds the bracket for the engine wire harness. And after that we'll remove this bolt to remove the bracket for the VSV wire connector for the ASIS system. Continuing along if you remove this 12 millimeter bolt it will free up this VSV for the EVAP system. You do not need to remove 
this electrical connector or this hose. You can then remove the other end of this hose which is connected to the top of the throttle body. Once you do that, you can remove this whole subassembly back and out of the way. Next we'll remove uh, these two brackets which support the throttle body cover. After that we'll remove the, uh, these two hoses from the top of the uh, intake manifold. Next we're going to remove these two vacuum lines, this one and this one, from the VSV for air injection system. Now I'll be removing the two electrical connectors here and here to the VSV for air injection system. Now I'm going to remove these two bolts and physically remove the VSV for air injection system and push this back and out of the way. Now I'm going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts, one here and one here, which are attached to two brackets that hold the uh, engine wire harness. There's a large plastic wire protector that's attached to the rear of the intake manifold and this uh, plastic box must be removed in order to get the manifold out. It's held on by two bolts. The, uh, the first one is uh, up in the upper part of the back and it is this bolt right there. The uh, second bolt that needs to be removed is the uh, dark one in the center of the screen. This bolt's located at the rear end of the right fuel delivery tube and about two inches below it. If you don't remove this bolt, you won't be able to lift up the right rear flange of the intake manifold. Unless your arms are about four feet long, there's no way that you can get to the uh, structures on the rear side of the uh, intake manifold. Therefore, I I've used uh, an old uh, mattress uh, from a chaise lounge to uh, lie down on the top of the engine and, and then work uh, uh, facing down. Next we're going to remove the four nuts and the six bolts that hold the intake manifold uh, to the heads. Uh, what you're looking at right now is the nut on the uh, front left corner of the intake manifold. Uh, there's a nut just like this on all the other three corners. Uh, on each side of the manifold there are also three bolts um, and uh, they're located below and somewhat uh, inboard of the fuel delivery tubes. Now these are the uh, six bolts and uh, four nuts that uh, hold on the intake manifold. Next I'm going to take the support bracket off for the front fuel delivery pipe by removing this 10 millimeter bolt right here. Next we'll be removing two 17 millimeter union bolts that attach the front fuel tube to both the right and left fuel delivery pipes. Both of these 17 millimeter unions have two metal crush gaskets associated with them and those gaskets should not be reused. This is what the front fuel pipe looks like uh, when removed. Uh, as I said, there are two 17 millimeter uh, union bolts that have two metal crush gaskets associated with them. We can now remove the fuel pressure regulator by removing these two bolts here and here. You will then lift up on the fuel pressure regulator, pulling it right straight up in its attachment to the fuel delivery tube below. Uh, in its attachment, there's a small O-ring which we'll be replacing. Also, I did not find that it was necessary to remove the fuel pressure regulator from the fuel line behind it. Uh, it simply can be lifted up and out of the way and uh, just save you another step. Now we're going to remove the two nuts that hold the right fuel delivery pipe in place. Uh, this one is located up near the front of the uh, manifold and there's another one about seven inches further back. You're going to need to use a deep well socket to remove these nuts because the 
stud protrudes so far up through the nut. Also, there is another fuel delivery pipe on the other side of the engine, and you're going to need to remove the two nuts holding that in place as well. The fuel injectors are sandwiched between the intake manifold on the bottom and the fuel delivery pipe on top. Once you've removed the uh, two bolts from the uh, fuel delivery pipe, if you pull straight up on it about an inch or so, all of the fuel injectors will be released and you can pull them up and out of the way, like I have here. I found that the fuel injector connectors on my engine, being 10 years old, were very brittle and prone to break. And therefore, I just left them attached to the to fuel injectors and pulled them up and out of the, out of the way. I found that the uh, grommets and the uh, insulators were hard and compressed and I decided that at that point that I was going to be replacing them along with the O-rings. Next I'm removing the uh, fuel delivery tube and pulling it up and out of the way. I found no reason to remove the fuel pressure damper from, the, uh, from its attachment to the rear of the left fuel delivery pipe. By leaving it attached, uh, you can uh, preserve the, uh, the O-rings and also uh, you can just lift up, after you've attached the fuel delivery pipe, you can just lift up on this whole structure and push it to the side. Before you take off the manifold, I think it's a good idea to lay some towels over on the uh, driver's side of the engine compartment uh, so that you don't uh, do any harm to the manifold, nor do you harm any of the uh, structures uh, just below here. Now with the uh, intake manifold off, uh, we can see the um, secondary air injection pump, uh, the diverter valve, and the two check valves back in the, uh, in the back. Our next job is to replace these.